I'm Eddie Conway here in Annapolis at the State House for the Real News. This is a special edition of Rattling the Bars. We're here to uh, see what will uh, happen to a bill that's been put in on behalf of uh, juveniles. There are more than 2,000 people whose life with parole sentences have been turned into life without parole sentences by virtue of Maryland's policies. No lifer has been paroled in the last 20 years. We are here working on HB 723. It's a bill that would remove the governor from the parole process for people who have been sentenced to life with the possibility of parole. For the last 20 years, Maryland's lifers have not had a meaningful opportunity for parole, and that's because Maryland is one of only three states in the country in which the very last step before someone can be released is a political step, requiring the governor to approve parole. And the result is that it's an incredibly politicized process. Um, and so for almost a quarter of a century, no one who has been recommended by the Parole Commission for parole has actually been paroled because, as you know, our governors typically have national aspirations. And so they're really concerned about allowing someone to be released and, you know, um, um, sort of the implications that might follow from that. Is there a point where there's too much incarceration and the benefits are lost and then people become a burden to society instead of an asset? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so I think overall we incarcerate far too many people uh, if the, if the uh, goal is public safety. No. <laughs> No governor has done the right thing in terms of listening to the recommendations of his own parole board. Okay? The people who are on parole boards are some of the most conservative folks appointed by governors. And if they make a decision about a person being on parole that perhaps he should step down in his uh, security and perhaps even be released, why wouldn't we listen to them? Maryland's current practice is actually unconstitutional and that's because the result in practice our system in which the governor has to sign off works works out so that someone who's sentenced to life with the possibility of parole such as many several juveniles folks who are sentenced as juveniles they're effectively sentenced to life without parole and that's unconstitutional. I was incarcerated for 39 years eight months five hours 24 minutes you forget the seconds after a while we are people who thrive on life. We want to progress in life. We want to become successful. And and how and Etta, how many times were you recommended for parole? I was recommended for parole a total of six times. I went up for parole a total of nine times. Thank you. And essentially what we're doing in Maryland, unfortunately, is our prisons are operating as nursing homes. Mm -hmm. Right? And so what is the point of that? We could care for these individuals so much better, so much more effectively, and so much um, more efficiently and less costly in the community, and we should do that. They cost over $60,000 a year because of medical problems, and they pose no danger if they're released. Uh, uh, the recidivism rate, the repeat offense rate for um, a lifer who's 25, 30 years in is very low to be almost non-existent. One of the things that happened uh, through my decades of being inside is I work with a lot of these young people and they work to mentor the younger people coming into the prison system. The younger people would listen to them, would respect what they say, and would maybe get their life together, and that's really the only kind of rehabilitation program that was going on in the jail system. And do you think those same people can work with young people outside and reach them and communicate with them? I think the whole thing in a nutshell is that we have to have men like yourself and myself that's willing to sacrifice to bring about that change. If it be to take them to a job appointment, go in the community, mentor those guys, see if they have any family issues that we might can help solve that issue, maybe find them some piecemeal employment, get them in some educational type programs that's beneficial to them, work with the family structure. There's a broken family structure that need help as well. Then we have the mothers and sisters who are struggling on their own. They even need some assistance.
Okay, I know you have worked with hundreds of lifers that have gotten out because of your effort. Uh, have you seen any benefits from helping to release those people? First of all, the Public Defender's Office has been a leader on this, and we've been work, working in partnership with them and a lot of other, a lot of other folks. Yeah, there are enormous benefits. Uh, you know, there are obvious benefits to the person who's released and their and his or her family, but you know, a number of these lifers have become counselors, particularly with youth. Uh, they're working in re-entry programs. Uh, they're teachers and advising. You know, they come into schools and they talk to kids about, you know, the path they took and why the kids shouldn't take that path. Uh, but they, they've been. Many of them have had very useful. Uh, productive lives that have really benefited the communities in which they live. That you are an example of what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. And and I, I'll say this: uh, when a lot of the lifers who were coming out who went in as young guys, and you were already there, and, and they were 16, 17, 18, you know, they said basically um, they turned to you, and you provided guidance and basically got them on the right path. And you are a force for positive work with young inmates in prison. So I respect you for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, now, Sharon, you are at all of these events, uh, at least all the ones that I have been to uh, uh, around the juvenile life for situation. Uh, why are you here? I'm here in support of my brother, Sean Blunt. Oh, he's been in prison for 33 years. He's been locked in there since he was the age of 16. So he done done everything, so we expect for them to do something for him now when he go off for parole. Um, so we here, I'm here to support the bill because we need the governor out, so once they do parole him, so he can come home. So that's why we here, we gonna stay here until we find out something, we gonna keep going at it until we get the governor out.